The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is a game that needs no introduction. Released in early 2017, this absolute behemoth of an open world puzzle solver was met with one of the most positive receptions in gaming history. As a new installment in the long-running Legend of Zelda series, Breath of the Wild introduced many new game mechanics, including a cooking system to help replenish hearts lost in battle. The quickest way to regain health is by eating raw foods that can be found all over the place. Apples are one of the most prevalent food sources and will restore half a heart container when consumed. Eating a bunch of apples in one go will help an overstuffed Link regain all of his health. To conserve resources, the foods can be cooked and combined to unlock greater healing potential. The first introduction to this is a baked apple found by a fireside near the beginning of the game. By combining goat butter with the apple in a cooking pot, a hot buttered apple is created. The apple's sweetness has been enhanced by smothering it with butter and baking it. And the ultimate apple creation, restoring three full heart containers, the apple pie. Now the game gives a list of ingredients and pretty good descriptions for each of these creations. So let's get started trying to make each one of them. Before we go, let's power up on a few fresh apples. First up, the basic baked apple. Now there is only one ingredient here, so you want to make sure to use an apple that already tastes great on its own. I will be using objectively the best type of apple, the Honeycrisp. There is a couple types of apples that will work here, but mainly you just want to avoid Red Delicious as it will turn to mush in the oven. Make sure that when you wrap the apple in tin foil, you make it look like an apple, so that you won't forget what it is after taking it out of the oven. Then bake it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 Celsius for 50 to 60 minutes. It's fully cooked when a paring knife will go into it with no resistance. And here we go, a basic baked apple. Let's go ahead and unwrap and dig in. Sorry about the grainy footage, I've apparently never used a camera before and didn't set the focus correctly. You can see my apple is a little underbaked. I should be able to get a spoonful without any effort. And it tastes exactly like what you would expect, kind of like a hot, mushy applesauce. Using Honeycrisp was a good choice since the apple still tastes really good, but honestly, this baking version is almost worse than the fresh apple. This certainly is not worth the effort of baking, which is why we're making the spiced up version next. Now we're starting work on the hot buttered apple. In the game, Link uses just an apple and some goat butter. And while I'm happy to test this out with goat butter, we're going to make this dessert a little bit more exciting with a handful of additional ingredients. We're starting out with coring four medium sized apples. I'm using Fiji this time. A melon baller works great for scooping out the apple cores. Just leave about an inch at the bottom so that we don't break through the lower skin. Now to mix together the apple filling. Add 1 3rd cup of brown sugar, 1 3rd cup toasted nuts, I'm using walnuts, a half teaspoon of cinnamon, and fresh nutmeg. Wait a second, can you explain why this has a shaker top? Anyways, grate the nutmeg and whisk together. You'll see I added a teaspoon of vanilla extract, which was a mistake. It immediately clumped up and didn't get well distributed. Instead, you should fill the apples and then pour a small amount of vanilla over each apple. Now we're filling each apple with our mixture. Oh, and say hi to Pesto as he walks by the camera. And now, this is where I would add the vanilla extract. Link's second ingredient is goat butter, which is easily available at most stores. Cut tablespoon sized pats of butter and place them on top of each of the apples. With all four of the apples in a square baking dish, pour boiling water around them until it covers the bottom inch of the dish. This will help steam our apples and prevent them from drying out in the oven. Now place them into a 350 degree Fahrenheit or 175 degree Celsius oven for 50 to 65 minutes, optionally pulling them out halfway through to baste them with the cooking water if they start drying out. While waiting for the apples to cool a bit, you can make fresh whipped cream as a delicious topping. Add one cup of heavy whipping cream and two tablespoons of granulated sugar to a bowl 
and beat until stiff peaks form. Remove the apples from the oven when they are soft to a paring knife. You will want them to be soft enough to be eaten with a spoon, but not falling apart. Fuzzy footage strikes again as I start plating. You will see the finished picture in just a second. To follow the in-game description of the dish, we are plating up a few apple slices, a spoonful of whipped cream on the side with a sprig of mint, and adding a sliver of goat butter on top of our apple. Digging in, I found this to be a little overbasted and full of liquid, so I transferred one of the apples to a bowl and tried again. The goat butter gives a wonderful funky taste that offsets the sweetness of the filling. Although for a more traditional dessert, unsalted butter would work just as well. This makes for a great and relatively easy dessert that can be modified in many ways. Instead of walnuts, you could try pecans or almonds. Instead of basting with water, you could use brandy or bourbon. The alcohol will bake off in the oven. And while plating up, nothing would go better with these apples than a large scoop of vanilla ice cream. And what goes better with vanilla ice cream than the peak of all apple desserts, apple pie? In the game, the recipe calls for four simple ingredients. Apples, goat butter, cane sugar, and tabantha wheat. To follow this, we're making a very unique whole wheat and goat butter pie crust. Goat butter has a much lower melting point than typical butter, so it's paramount that we keep it as cold as possible throughout the entire process. I'm cutting the butter into 1 inch cubes before starting my crust so that they can stay in the fridge while I get the other ingredients together. I will be making two full crust recipes for the pie crust and the lattice decoration, therefore I am cutting up 12 ounces of goat butter. Once placed in the fridge, we can start with the other ingredients. Into a stand mixer, we're going to add 4 ounces of whole wheat flour, 3 ounces of all-purpose flour, half an ounce of granulated sugar, and a pinch of salt. Pulse these ingredients a few times for equal incorporation. Now add 6 ounces or half of the previously cubed goat butter. Pulse until the mixture has a sandy texture or at least until the clumps of butter are about pea-sized. Then, drizzle in 3-5 to five ounces of ice water, again keeping everything as cold as possible. Dump the dough mixture onto an unfloured surface and bring together to form a 1 inch thick puck. My dough in this batch is slightly too dry, as an overcompensation for the first crust I made being much too wet. The whole wheat flour in this recipe will absorb more water than standard all purpose flour, so it's okay if your dough comes out wetter than a typical pie dough. Tightly wrap the dough and place in a fridge for a minimum of one and a half to two hours up to overnight. This dough needs to rest longer than a standard pie dough to fully hydrate the whole wheat flour and to keep the goat butter ice cold. While the dough rests and hydrates, it's time to tend to our pie filling. Mainly a whole lot of apples. For this pie I chose to use a mixture of Granny Smith and Honeycrisp apples. Both are great for baking as they can survive high heats while retaining texture and together make a sweet and flavorful filling. We're going to peel about 3 pounds or 5 to 7 medium to large apples, then core each apple and thinly slice. At this point you can squeeze half a lemon onto the apple slices to keep them from oxidizing and turning brown. This is not completely necessary, but I find it adds a brightness that accentuates the apple's flavors. Toss the apples in a large bowl to get them fully coated before adding 6 ounces or 3 quarters of a cup of granulated sugar, a quarter teaspoon each of cinnamon, allspice, ginger, and freshly grated nutmeg, followed by 2 tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Toss the mixture vigorously so that everything is evenly coated and let rest until the crust is ready to roll out. Get the dough out of the fridge and unwrap it onto a floured surface. Flour the top of the dough and the rolling pin and start rolling it out until it is about 3 inches larger than the diameter of your pie dish. It will quickly become apparent that my first dough was much too wet as it stuck and tore all over the place. The crust will be fine though because you could just patch it up, but it won't be quite as clean as a properly hydrated dough. Now let's grab our filling and drain out any accumulated liquid before pouring it into our crust. 
Try to make the apple slices as even as possible to prevent the upper crust from forming valleys while baking. Roll out your second dough to about a quarter of an inch thick and cut into one inch strips. This should allow for about 10 to 12 strips to be made for our lattice. Start by laying half of the strips all in the same direction and then pick up every other strip to insert a perpendicular piece of dough. Repeat lifting and layering your dough strips until the lattice is formed. When complete, trim the strips to one inch of overhang and fold under the lower crust. Using your thumb and pointer finger, crimp the crust all the way around. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius with a rimmed baking tray inside. Use a pastry brush to dust off any excess flour, then apply an egg wash of one beaten egg white and sprinkle the surface of the pie with demerara sugar. Place your pie in the preheated oven on the baking tray and bake for 45 to 65 minutes. Tent the pie part way through if the crust or sugar starts to scorch. Use a toothpick to test for doneness. It should pierce pieces of apple with no resistance. Now let that pie rest at room temperature for a minimum of four hours. Now we can finally cut into our pie and plate up with a few apple slices and a sprig of mint. It wouldn't be a real apple pie without a big dollop of whipped cream on top. And I have to say, this tastes nothing like any apple pie I've had before, and it's totally delicious. The goat butter left the crust incredibly flaky and with a light funky flavor. The whole wheat flour makes for a much softer crust while adding a nuttiness that accentuates the fall flavors of our spiced filling. Overall, it is a great pie that ended up less cloyingly sweet than its standard crust cousin. Maybe Link does know his way around a cooking pot after all. Thank you for making it this far in my first video. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any video game foods you'd like to see in my upcoming videos, then comment down below. I also stream live on Twitch, playing games to find new recipes. Don't forget to follow me over there if you want a sneak peek of what's next.